In Chile, a joyous ending to 42 years of sorrow. A mother who was told her child died, at chi uh, died in childbirth got a stunning phone call telling her he was actually alive. But as Rafael Romo tells us, many babies were stolen there in the 1970s and 80s, and this reunion is heartbreakingly one of just a few. When I arrived in Chile, I felt like a, a lost puzzle piece, a piece that had been lost for 42 years. It's a birthday party that had to wait for more than four decades. They stole 42 years, but they will not steal 43. <laughs> Jimmy Lippert Titan is celebrating with a family he never knew he had. I am blessed in the fact that I have a loving family on both sides of the equator. His story begins in 1981 in Valdivia, a city in southern Chile. My mother, my mama, uh, she gave birth to me one month premature. They told her, you know, oh, he looks jaundiced, you know, he looks yellow, we need to put him in an incubator, and they carried me out of there. Before she could hold me, before she could name me, they carried me out, um, and then they came back and told her that I had died. Tyden says that it was all a scheme to make money out of unsuspecting foreign families looking to adopt children, especially Americans who had no idea what was going on. Your adoptive family in the United States had no idea that you had been stolen as a baby? They never believed for one second they were buying a child. They never would have, would have done that. During the dictatorship of General Augusto Pinochet in the 1970s and 80s, babies were funneled to adoption agencies, some from the upper classes, taken or given up to protect reputations of their mothers, and some from the lower classes where children were simply stolen. Chilean authorities say many priests, nuns, doctors, nurses, and others conspired to carry out illegal adoptions. Authorities told us the number of stolen babies could be in the thousands, but the investigation into the adoptions has languished over the years, and some of the hospitals where the children were born have shut down, as we have found out over the years. For many women in this country, what this hospital in ruins means is a place where their children were stolen, a place that became a nightmare for them. They were looking for a place where they would deliver a healthy baby. Instead, they left empty-handed. Constanza del Rio, the founder of Nos Buscamos, says that after Jimmy Titan got in touch with them, she recommended a DNA test. Hello, my name is Jimmy Titan. When a match came back a few weeks later, she says she knew the next step was making a phone call to a woman who had believed for decades her son had died shortly after being born. She couldn't believe it, she said. She thought it was a joke in poor taste because she had been told her premature baby boy had died. She didn't know about me uh, because I was taken from her at birth and she was told that I was dead and that um, when she asked for my body they told her that they had disposed of it. And so we've never held each other, we've never hugged. and. Today I'm going to get to do that for the first time. After several agonizing months, Jimmy Titan was finally able to travel to Chile <laughs> to give Maria Angelica Gonzalez, his biological mother, the hug that had to wait for 42 years. What would you like the world to know about what happened to you? What do you want people to know about your case? I want them to know that there's tens of thousands of children like me. We tell our story, we do these interviews because we tell these stories until every child is found. How do you get back the time lost? You can't, Jimmy Titan says. In the end, he added, the wisdom about what happened came from one of his daughters who told him if a bad thing hadn't happened, she wouldn't be here. And thanks to that, her father now has not one but two families who love him deeply. Rafael Romo, CNN, Santiago, Chile, and Atlanta.